transformed into his image. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are all engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's words. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel to the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 to chapter 4 verse 7. Ancient mirrors were not as clear as ours. They were always a little hazy and blurred. And yet they could still reflect the image of whatever was in front of them. In this passage, St Paul uses the image of a mirror to describe how we find ourselves growing into the likeness of Christ throughout our lives. In chapter 3, he has explored the idea that unlike Moses in the Old Testament, who had to wear a veil over his face so as to avoid being blinded by the light of God, now that God has revealed himself to us in the face of Jesus Christ, we can look with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. As we look on the glory of Christ, his compassion, his humility, his acts of healing, his teaching, his death and resurrection, we see right before us in the image of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. As we look into the glory of God revealed in the face of Christ, we will gradually transformed into his image, just as a mirror takes on the image of what is placed before it. The 4th century Christian theologian Gregory of Nyssa used this idea often. Human nature is very much like a mirror in its ability to change in accordance with the different impressions of its free will. When you put gold in front of a mirror, the mirror takes on the appearance of the gold and because of the reflection, it shines with the same gleam as the real substance. So too, if it catches the reflection of something loathsome, it imitates this ugliness by means of a likeness, as for example of a frog, a toad, a millipede, or anything else that is disgusting to look at, thus reproducing in its own substance whatever is placed in front of it. Whether or not you find toads or millipedes loathsome, Gregory's point is that just as a mirror takes on the colours and shape of whatever is placed before it, so we will tend to take on the shape and image of whatever we put in front of our gaze. Ancient mirrors were made of polished metal and so often showed an image that was a little blurred. This helps our understanding here. We may reflect the image of what we look at imperfectly, but what we look at still determines what happens to our souls. So it matters what we spend our time looking at. Everything we read or watch on TV, websites, YouTube or Netflix shapes us in small and subtle ways in a positive or a negative direction. Depending on whom we follow or what fills our feeds, hours spent scrolling through Twitter, Facebook or Instagram can either lift our spirits or twist them into knots. So the advice of St Paul, and for that matter Gregory and many of the wise Christians of the past, is to make sure we fill our hearts and minds with what is life-giving, truthful, honest and wise. Jesus once said, your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, 
your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Luke chapter 11, verse 34. What you let into your eyes affects your heart more than what goes into your stomach. In particular, this reminds us of the importance of worship. As we come to pay close attention to the God of Jesus Christ day by day, and especially when we come together on Sundays, asking the Holy Spirit to make Jesus real to us, we find ourselves slowly being transformed into the image of Christ who fills our attention. It is a call to us to make a priority of worship, prayer and reading of the Bible. Yes, there may be times we have to miss our regular acts of worship, but let's not try to get out of the habit of looking intentionally and regularly into the face of Jesus Christ so we are, like those ancient mirrors, can take on the likeness as we grow into maturity. How would your